All right, getting back to work on the uh, 3120 John Deere uh, rear axle housing replacement. Um, these things do not break. Okay, they're you know they they are designed to not break, but unfortunately, you know the incident that happened with me as far as uh, rolling backwards because my brakes didn't work, everything was froze up, uh, and rolling over an embankment uh, and hitting a tree with the tractor. Uh, snap the housing. So, looked on YouTube. This video will probably be the first because I haven't found one uh, for tearing into these compact tractors on the rear or on the rear end. So, the rear end is a three-piece deal. You have uh, a left side, a right side, and then the center section. Now, you don't have to take you don't have to take it down as far as I did. Um, I did it for uh, structural reasons. I wanted to see, make sure that there wasn't any internal cracks or anything like that for what actually happened. So, right here is the old housing. Okay, that piece is supposed to be on that piece and the axle slides through there, all that good stuff. Your brakes set in there, the whole nine yards. So, like I said, there has not been any video that I had found on how to remove what to look for uh, and to expect on removal of this. So I ended up going the hard way uh, and uh, actually had an issue with um, this piece right here. This is the brake cam uh, that goes on this shaft right here. And uh, it was actually froze up. So that's why my brakes did not work on the tractor. Of course, this is a hydrostatic tractor, so the brakes didn't really get used very much. Uh, this is a 2009 3120. And from what I was told is this is the same rear end uh, for the whole 3000 series compacts. Now, I don't know how long they uh, ran this or if they're even still running those rear ends, these rear ends. But, uh, you know, just one thing to look for here, or to give you a little guidance. So, as you can see, I had to heat this up to get it off of this shaft. Um, the problem was, when we started pulling everything apart, this all comes off in one unit. So, when we started pulling this apart, uh, there's an O-ring that I didn't know about that rides right here. Well, that O-ring actually got wedged in between here, the end of the shaft, and inside of here. So at that point, we had to put some heat on it and use some pullers and pull it out. That's why there's a puller there, there's a puller there, tools are out, set of torches are out. So we're going to put this thing back together. Uh, we're going to build the case on the inside. I'll show you how... Uh, all the brakes are. I'll give you part numbers for gaskets and um, You know torque specs. So let's get to it All right, so this is the brand new housing that uh, I had to get through John Deere um, No one had them in a junkyard uh, You know in a tractor or salvage yard or anything like that. So that really says something about these things uh, you know withstanding some abuse and holding up so um, your brakes ride right in here, okay? And believe it or not, there's actually a gasket that goes on here. And there it is. The gasket number, uh, part number is LVU, so that's Larry Victor Union, 801660. Right there. So that's the gasket number. And then when you put all your brakes in, uh, the torque specs on the screws here, uh, the torque specs on the screws are um, 21 foot-pounds of torque. So there it is. And that's for the 31, you can see, that's for the 3120, 3320, 3520, 3720 compact. And like I said, I don't know how many years they actually ran this rear end, but this is for a 2009 3120 so there's a we'll go ahead and build everything and put in here 
and we'll do that step by step. I'll just show you what we're doing and uh, how to put it together just in case something happens on your guys' end and you need some help. So we'll get you set up and we'll make that happen. All right, so the first thing, these dimples are for ball bearings, all right? So I was lucky and fortunate enough not to lose any of mine. Uh, when I took, uh, or when this actually hit and uh, split apart. So, um, you know, if you have them out, whatever, and you're doing this, make sure you clean your balls, your ball bearings, and, uh, you know, stick them back in there. Uh, you can use brake parts cleaner, which is fine. You just want to make sure your balls are clean. And then this plate here, this is this actually goes down on the ball bearings. You want to make sure that's clean of any debris also. Get you guys at a little better angle. So your ball bearings ride in these dimples, and this will only go in one way. Like this. This is where your brake surface is. Set this in there, and that'll fall into place. And when you turn this, the plate will actually raise up, and that's what tightens your brake. So, I cleaned up the brake cam for, you know, the pedal. Um, this, this thing here is a pain in the ass. This thing here, the only reason I didn't cut this off and replace it is it's 260 bucks just for that. So, i done some uh, hillbilly ingenuity on cleaning it up after getting it off of there with a torch, heating stuff up and stuff, and making sure that this fits in the hole real nice and snug, and also cleaning out the center, uh, cleaning out the rust and stuff. Um, I will have to get uh, some uh, uh, never sees, and I'm actually just going to put some never sees down in here whenever I put this casing all onto the tractor. So... This only goes in one way. The gnarled end, of course, is down with the keyway and your roll pin. Fits in there nice and snug. Dag on mosquitoes. Anyway, so that fits in there nice and snug. And that's how that's supposed to work. Just like that. The next step. This here is your um, uh, output shaft that comes out of the uh, transaxle of the tractor. So this is basically, this is your final drive right here. So <clears throat> your final drive, the way this goes together is all your brakes and everything go in here, but you have to put your brakes, your brake pads and your discs on here first because there is a... Uh, 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 there's a lock ring that goes on there. So, and then all that gets hidden down like that, and you're not able to get to it unless you build it outside. So, we'll go ahead and build this and get this put together, and then we can put that to put all that together. <clears throat> so, you don't want to put these in backwards on the 3000 series John Deere's. For 09, at least, you have three clutch discs, and then you have two plates. You have a backing plate, which a gasket will go on here after the fact that we put it all together. So you want to make sure everything's right um, as far as your plates when you're putting them together because you don't want to take it back apart. All this has to be put together to go onto the casing. Uh, first, so make sure your bearings are clean and and uh, freed up. You don't want anything uh, in them. And like I said, brake clean is going to be your friend. So set the bearing, maybe. 
come out easy. Ouch. I'll get a block of wood. Okay. Get the bearing in there. Where it's set in there nice. And then you can take all this together. So it's a clutter or it's a brake disc. Um, I don't even know what you'd call these. Uh, whatever's disc, regular disc, brake disc, regular disc, and then a brake disc. And you want to make sure that this goes on correctly so you don't have to deal with it and take it back apart. I need to make sure I got it right. So, this over here where you guys can see. Get that to stand. Maybe. There we go. So, brake disc, regular disc, brake, smooth, brake. Then you got a snap ring that you have to put on, and that'll hold everything together. All right, now that that's all together, this here's the gasket number that you'll need. I think I said it already, but it's LVU, which is Larry Victor Union, 801660. That is directly from John Deere, and that gasket goes here for your brakes. So, get this thing up unpackaged and get it on there. All right, got the gasket on there. Put the gasket on here. All right, so for your seven bolts, uh, there is a torque spec on them. It's 21 foot-pounds torque. Uh, it's going to be a 13 millimeter socket, and uh, they suggest uh, medium strength Loctite thread locker. So that's what we're going to use, and uh, you can pick up a torque wrench from Harbor Freight. That's exactly what this one, you know, came from. Uh, I didn't have a torque wrench to go down to 21 foot pounds, so I had to go buy one and I opted at Harbor Freight. They're 20 bucks. So um, make sure you put uh, some uh, Loctite on here. And like I said, don't use, uh, I, was, I was told 
by a master mechanic over at JD, do not use um, anything higher than this medium grade uh, for these bolts. Um, you, he even said, he goes, honestly, you don't have to put any on there, but if you're going to put uh, medium duty, and it also states in the paperwork, um, you know, medium duty. And that's on anything that I'm doing on this tractor uh, as of this time. Uh, we're, not, we're not going any higher than the medium duty uh, Loctite. So we'll go through, get uh, Loctite put on these and get them screwed in and get those torqued down and this, uh, this part will be done. Step over on this side. So there's there's a pin, a dowel pin here and a dowel pin here. I typically like to start right there. So we'll just go to 21 foot pounds and your torque wrench will click if that's the style that you have. That's the style this is. So we're just waiting for it to click. There it is. Okay, so after you get all that torque down to 21 foot-pounds of torque, um, you should be able to take and spin everything. If for some reason you cannot spin this, you've got the ears wrong somewhere over here. Okay, the three ears on your plates. So your large ear ought to go here toward your uh, axle housing for your brakes. And then your close small ear here. And then the ones that are farther away will go down into this hole. So everything will line up. If you put them on the other way, this thing will be tight and you'll probably bend an ear. Uh, another thing, uh, you could take some uh, automatic uh, transmission fluid and lube the, uh, the brakes with uh, automatic transmission fluid. That's what they specify to do. You can do that. Uh, any ATF will be fine. Uh, this is a wet system, so that's why you put fluid on your brakes. Uh, the next step after, after you do that uh, for your brake cam, make sure your brake cam works also. Brake cam's working. The next step would be take the washer that holds the brake cam up off of the casing to keep from wearing a hole in the casing. Uh, you put the washer on, uh, pop that up a little bit, and then you put your C-clip on. Uh, put your C-clip on there, and that takes care of that. Um, after that, this thing's pretty much buttoned up. What you would do is you would take your bull gear, set your bull gear in there. See if I can do this without pinching my fingers. Set your bull gear in there, and that right there is what it would look like if you pulled that side casing off of the tractor. Um, to pull the axle, you do not have to pull, or there is no there is no nut or anything on this side of the bull gear. Uh, the older tractors and stuff, you typically have like a, a, a big nut with a washer or a big bolt holding this bull gear on. The only thing holding your axle shaft in um, are the four outer bolts 
for your axle housing, which are right there, those four bolts. And uh, the spork or the uh, torque specs on those are also 21 foot pounds um, for your cap for those four bolts. The uh, torque spec, let's see, what do we have? Okay, so yeah, final drive housing to transmission housing cap screws, uh, which would be your bigger bolts for the housing here. Uh, those are 700 or 107 foot pounds of torque. Um, and you can put, you, you know, use a medium duty thread lock on that also whenever you put it back together. Uh, that's what I'd recommend. Um, but then again, you don't have to, uh, and you know, it is what it is. I mean, this thing's back together as far as the, uh, axle housing, um, this actually, it's dark out, so tomorrow uh, I will actually put this back together. But uh, as far as taking this apart, uh, you know, this there's nothing on YouTube that I had found uh, for any of these compacts to, you know, to be able to take these apart. Like I said, this, this is for the 3000 series, uh, maybe the same style, you know, maybe the same way for some of the other tractors but uh yeah i mean this is uh pretty simple the only thing that you may have problems with will be uh the brake cam uh itself might be seized up uh they had a few things that they had done to those to upgrade them were uh the newer ones have grease zerks uh, in them. I'm just going to put never seize down in through there. I don't feel that I'll ever have to take this apart again. I'll make sure that it stays lubed up. Uh, I will use the brakes frequently and make sure that they stay in good standings. So um, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, the next video, of course, is going to be actually putting the tractor all back together. And, uh, you know, it'll be kind of a speeded video. So, um, we'll get the tractor put back together and get it back uh, to being able to be used. So until next time, guys, like, subscribe, hit the bell, drop some comments, ask questions, and uh, I'll get with you as soon as I can. So until the next one, thanks for watching.